Hey, it's Joseph, and today we're going to take some flat vector layers that make up an iOS-style switch component and use a few techniques to give it depth and make the switch feel much more tangible and tactile. So far, my document consists of a simple white rectangle as a background, another rectangle with rounded corners for the switch container, and a circle for the switch knob that will slide back and forth. Exact numbers won't be super important for this tutorial, but to give you a sense of scale for what I'm working with, the gray switch container is 50 by 30, and the knob is 26 by 26. All right, the first thing we need to do before we get started is shift our mindset a bit and start thinking about each layer as a physical surface that's getting hit by an implied light source. This mindset will help us figure out where highlights and shadows will make the most sense. For this tutorial, we'll say our implied light source is up above us, where lights usually are. You can think of the image we're creating here as a photograph that we're trying to properly expose. And if you've edited photos before, you know that absolute white means overexposed, a phenomenon that we usually only allow for bright light sources or specular highlights. That being said, let's start by selecting the background and make it a light gray instead of white. Next, we can darken the cutout container of the switch even more to create the effect that the container is casting a shadow in on itself. To do this, I'll use a gradient and make it a tad darker at the top than it is at the bottom. Another subtle trick here is using slightly cooler tones in the shadows. Assuming our implied light source is warm in tone, areas where the light can't reach would appear slightly less warm. We can push the depth a bit further by adding an inner shadow. The default color is fine for our purposes, but let's scoot it down a tad to a Y position of 3. Then soften it by increasing the blur to around 8. Cool. Now let's shift focus to the knob. If it's sticking out, it should be casting a shadow. Let's select the circle and add a shadow on the inspector. By no coincidence, I'll use the same Y position of 3 and a blur of 8. We can probably get away with darkening the shadow a little bit too by increasing the alpha of the color. Now, with this shadow casting on both the switch container and the background, it looks like it's protruding further than I want it to be. I'd like for the knob to appear more flush with the background layer, which means it should only cast its shadow into the switch container. Easy fix. We can select both the knob and the container, right-click, and choose Mask Selection. Now the shape of the knob, as well as its shadow, will be clipped within the path of the container. Now it's time to make the surface of the knob a bit more tangible by replacing the white fill with a subtle gradient. To make the surface appear as though it's slightly bulging out, I'll make the top of it a bit lighter and the bottom a bit darker, since again, our implied light source is up above. That being said, it's very uncommon that the edges of things in the real world are as infinitely sharp as a vector shape which means the edge of this knob should appear ever so slightly rounded, therefore catching a bit of highlight at the top and shadow at the bottom. We can add these using inner shadows. I'll start with the highlight by adding an inner shadow, setting the color to white, and increasing the alpha all the way up, since white on light gray is subtle enough as it is. Next, I'm going to take the blur all the way down to zero, temporarily, just so it's easier to see what we're doing. At this scale, even a Y position of 1 is pushing this a little bit too far, so I'm going to set the Y position to 0 0.5. That's better. And now that the position looks good, I'll set the blur to 1. Next, I'll add another inner shadow to show the light rolling off the bottom edge. This one's going to be black, which looks a bit too heavy, so I'm going to bring the alpha down to a very low value of about 10. And since this shadow is going to be the inverse of the highlight we just created, I'll set the Y position to negative 0.5, so it peaks up from the bottom. Then finally, set the blur to 1. Great, so now our knob has a very subtle set of properties that indicate that it's a physical object being hit by a real light source. Subtle is the key here. In fact, this might be so subtle that your eyes are struggling to see what we've even done so far. That's more normal than you might think. This next step is going to break that illusion. Now let's create an indentation in the knob. With the knob selected, I'll press Command D on the keyboard to duplicate it. Then hold Shift and Option and resize it down to about 16 by 16. 
then disable that shadow. Now we've got what appears to be a bulge sticking out of the knob. Let's actually take this opportunity to increase the contrast of the gradient fill. Then also bring up the alpha of the dark inner shadow to make this look a bit more pronounced. But I did say we were going to create an indentation. To invert the appearance of this from a protrusion to an indentation, all we need to do is flip the whole thing vertically. And voila, it's now an indentation. It's a bit crisp around the edges, so we can apply a Gaussian blur to the whole thing with a radius of 1. Now this is looking really good. For a couple of finishing touches, we can add some regular shadows around the outside of the container to contour the edges. A dark shadow at the top makes the surface appear to round slightly inward. And the opposite at the bottom catches a highlight as the edge rolls back out. Finally, changing the background from a solid fill to a gradient that's slightly lighter at the top will be consistent with the position of our implied light source. And we're done. Now, head to Sketch and try it out for yourself.